when you're doing formal meditation, you want to give 100% attention to what you're doing. That is, 100% attention to the breath. Try to be really sensitive to how the breath feels coming in, how it feels going out. And don't tolerate any other thoughts that will come in. We're often told that we should learn to welcome other thoughts and sit down with our greed, aversion, and delusion, talk nicely to them. But a lot of times they just barge right in, and you're going to have to push them back. Remember those techniques that the Buddha gives for dealing with distracting thoughts, for unskillful thoughts. Some of them require some discernment, as when you think about the drawbacks of those things, types of thinking. But there's that one that requires just brute force. As the Buddha said the image is of two strong men beating down a weak man. In the same way you beat down any thoughts that come in that get in the way. So remember that you have a full set of tools here. And don't be afraid to use the sledgehammer when you have to. But the best way to keep distracting thoughts out is just to find is to learn how to find the breath really interesting. And it's not just the flow of the breath through the body, but your perceptions around the breath. You think of the breath coming in up from the floor. And that changes the dynamic. Years back, I was I was at a memorial service for a student who had more fans. And she had very, been very instrumental in setting up the National Marfam Association. It's a Marfam syndrome is a connective tissue disease. In one of the eulogies that was given after I had given some breath meditation instructions was given by a woman whose nephew had Marfam's. And my student had gone to consult him after he'd had a heart attack, and none of the pain relievers were, were helping him at all. So she listened for a minute about what pain he was suffering from. And the recommendation she gave was, breathe through your butt. After the service, I talked to the nephew, and he said it really did help. Because when you have one perception of the breath that you've got to pull it down, you tend to encourage the, the feelings that come, that say oh, you're pulling down, pulling down, pulling down. But sometimes that can create a lot of tension, especially in the back of the neck and the shoulders. So think of the breath coming up, coming up. Or as John Fung used to say, think of your spine developing roots going down into the earth, and the nourishment coming up from the earth. That changes the dynamic. So you begin to see, even the perception of something simple like this can change everything. And think about all your other perceptions in the world, how much your life is ruled by your perceptions, the labels you put on things. And maybe it's time you tore off the old labels and su supplied some new ones. I mean, eventually, of course, you're going to have to let go of all perceptions. But some perceptions are really useful, as the Buddha said. I don't know if it was Susan or sorry, Buddha said. Some perceptions pull you down, some perceptions steady the mind. Some perceptions raise the level of your mind, and some perceptions release you. So they have this power. Don't think you're just going to get in touch with your raw experience and be with the raw reality of things. That doesn't really happen to awakening. In the meantime, you've got to learn how to change your perceptions so that they really are helpful. So there's a lot to get interested in here. If you get bored of thinking about the breath, well, think about the perceptions. Think about what your mind is doing around the breath. And that way you can give your full attention to what you're doing right here, right now. And when you have full attention right here, it just repels any other thoughts. It's this element of being really interested in what you're doing. That's what gives the meditation power.